Hey guys, Richard from Spirits of Japan. So um started uh, thinking about doing a blog about um, the Empress. There's uh, 126 or 127, depending on who you talk to. Um, all have amazing stories. Um, I thought maybe we'll do a little blog on each one of them and uh, talk about these guys, these uh, this uh, you know, Japan's uh, imperial lineage is a hundred and uh, uh, twenty six or one hundred twenty seven emperors at two thousand six hundred and seventy nine years, all same family, um, longest imperial lineage on the earth, absolutely amazing. So um, I um, I, I I have a little special interest in that. I like to kind of go through uh. Um, first one we're going to talk about, we're going to do each one of these like five minutes so it doesn't you know, bore you because I can be very boring. Uh, but let's, let's start out with the very first emperor. Um, I call him Jim, his, his, uh, emperor Jimu. And, uh, he was, um, uh, a, a great, great grandson of the supreme goddess, the supreme goddess of Japan. Her name is Amaterasu. And Amaterasu um, was um, pretty amazing. She had a kid um, called uh, uh, Ameno or Ameno Osho Mimi, something like that. And uh, that person had a child named Minigi, which was uh, very, very famous, came down to earth uh, with the objective, the original objective of becoming the emperor. But fell in love with a, with a, with a human, and um, kind of forgot what he was actually here for. Uh, the next person, Hori, was uh, uh, Ninigi had a wife. They had three kids, and Hori came down, and I guess he fell into the same fate that Daddy did. Um, finally, um, but Hori had a son, so it would have been Ninigi's great grandson, great 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 grandson of Amaterasu. Who was um, uh, he? He 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 was uh, had a really bad life. He was uh, this this guy. Uh, I forget his name. I forget it. You know, you know, Hiko Hiko Nagisa. Yeah, Hiko Nagisa. So this Hiko Nagisa guy, um, his mother was actually the uh, daughter of. A dragon king, uh, 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 no, 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 uh, uh, the god of the sea, and so uh, his name was Ryujin. Ryu is dragon, and so uh, Ryujin had this two daughters, um, and uh, one of them was about to have a baby. But she didn't want her husband seeing her having the baby because she wanted to have her baby in her true form, and I guess he really didn't know what that meant. So she went behind this rock at the beach and and uh, changed into her dragon form, and uh, he couldn't stand it. He heard her, you know, it, it took a long time. He heard her having a baby, and he was worried because he was having it on her own, so he walks around the rock, sees her, and freaks out, and runs away, and uh, after she has the baby, uh, she takes off all embarrassed and leaves the, the baby on the beach. Um, so <laughs> suck. Uh, her little sister, Tama Yori, ends up... Um, running to the scene because she had heard her sister, her big sister was had a baby, picks up the baby, raises the baby. And I guess she was a really younger sister because she ends up raising the baby and eventually ends up marrying the guy when he grows into adulthood. And they had four kids. And the fourth child was Jimu. Now, Jimu wasn't originally supposed to be emperor. Uh, another one of his uh, um, uh, brothers were to be... Uh, um, Emperor, that's another story. But uh, he had two brothers that uh, when um, Emperor was was given the uh, three regalia of Japan, there's a sword, there is a uh, some jewels, and then there's a mirror, a highly polished piece of copper or something, that was given to uh, for them to come down and um, take over the land. All this time that all these other... Uh, uh, fathers and grandfathers were given this job. Ev evidently, they um, they uh, you know, fallen in love with humans and taking up all this time. Uh, there was this other god and his wife Okuni Nushi and Ikutama, which were um, 
down here governing everything. And uh, so when they came down to um, to uh, to take over, well, the Okunini she really didn't want to give up um, the, the 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 land. So there was a battle, and a battle since everybody was born in Kyushu, uh, which is the southern western most largest southern western island uh battled this way and as they were battling this way uh i don't know there was a a lot going on and uh the uh, uh the two, two of the brothers two of the four brothers didn't take part in the battle it was just uh uh jimu and his brother itsuse and they get to um osaka so when they get to osaka there's this uh, uh there's this one guy uh, I forget his name, but he was, uh, he was a long-legged man, and he was really uh, a great warrior. And his army fights uh, Itsuse and Jimu, and Itsuse dies in battle. So, with that said, um, you know, he, you know, Jimu's like something's wrong, something's wrong. We got, we got to, we got back out of this. And he, um, he, he talks to the gods, you know, has this dream that he's battling against the sun because the sun rises in the east, sets in the west, and he's battling as, you know, the sun's coming up. And he says, you know, uh, we, we need to go the other way. Um, so he gets his revelation, jumps in a boat, goes all the way around Wakayama Prefecture and meets this uh, raven. And um, raven's my spirit animal, uh, as we say in Hawaii, Amakua. And uh, I've seen them everywhere I go. I, I love ravens. But this raven was a little bit different. had three legs. So this three-legged raven um, greets Jimu as he gets to the shores and to the mountains there in Issei, which, by the way, of the 88,000 shrines in Japan, um, Issei is the top shrine located there. Uh, I go there a lot. It's a beautiful place. But uh, this raven gives him pointers on how to defeat this long-legged man so the battle ensues they cross the mountains <clears throat> and they start battling from the other side and eventually defeating uh uh um, the army and uh, emperor uh, jimu uh, begins uh, he's emperor at 50 51 years old he was born in 711 bc becomes emperor at 660 bc 50 yeah one or something so with that said, he's now um, he's not the emperor. He's he's the boss. Uh, as um, in Osaka, as a I don't know a remembrance or a sign of respect towards Okuni Nushi's wife Ikutama, he builds a shrine to her in 660 BC. Uh, Osaka back then meant old, old meant large, and Osa Osaka means slope. So long, long slope, and then Emperor Jimu built that uh, um, uh, shrine there, where Osaka Castle sits today. That's another story. Um, uh, the shrine's since been moved three kilometers south in 1580, but that again, that's another story. So um, Jimu becomes um, the man, and he becomes the first emperor of Japan. Lives to be 126 years old, so he governs. You know. 80, 90 years, and that's the story of this incredible uh, emperor slash warrior, uh, Emperor Jimmu, J-I-M-M-U. Uh, stay tuned for more. Uh, I'll be posting one every few days, and uh, maybe hear some fun stories. Bye.